Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's the podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And I meant to talk about today's topic a little while back ago, but I got caught up kind of in recording other episodes, and I figured, well, now might be a good time since the boys just recently wrapped up their latest season and I kind of want to take the time now to not only kind of review some of the um, I guess mixed reaction that this latest season has gone but you know give my own thoughts on this season as well as I guess uh, the show as a whole and where I wanted to um, where I want not only the show but I guess even like the franchise to move into the future but um yeah, like I said, this this latest season kind of got a mixed response from a lot of viewers. I think, granted, some of it might have been done in bad faith. Like, it's just from people that disagree with the politics of the show. Uh, I'm not really here to discuss that side of um, this whole discussion. Because, you know, it's just not, you know, the nature of the podcast. But rather, I kind of want to discuss, I think, where more people were kind of divided on this latest season. And um, I'm sorry, I kind of have to be vague with this. It's, uh, I I just don't want to trip the, you know, 18 plus tag because I don't want to have to put that on this episode. And, you know, because it might kill like visibility and I've been doing kind of pretty decently getting my, um, you know, increasing my click through rate for episodes. So again, I apologize uh, for how vague I'll have to be in talking about this, but um, in particular, the split that a lot of viewers have had over the Huey Tech Knight Dungeon episode. And if you've seen the show, you know the episode I'm talking about. Like a lot of when it came out, a lot of people were very divided on it. Um, A lot of people saying that this was like the down, like this is where the show has gone downhill. Um, And again, some of that might have been from, you know, earlier uh, bad faith, uh, I guess bad faith actors wanting to, you know, already like, you know, critique the show for, again, disagreeing with their politics. But I think a lot of it was also from people that um, both have, I think, valid and invalid criticisms of of the episode so i'll I'll start with like the criticism that i think i agree with more um and again i apologize for having to be as vague as i am but um a lot of people uh when talking about that episode um were saying that they were treating the if again if you know the episode that they were treating the subject matter um more humorous like there it was framed in a more humorous manner especially with what happened to huey and that um you know it's kind of a bad trope that exists in uh a lot of like shows and television where you know this particular topic especially as it's directed towards guys is treated again more humorously than seriously uh and yeah, I kind of agree with it. I, I do see what they mean. Uh, like, Pop Culture Detective did, like, a really great episode discussing, like, how how long-running and how um, how long-running of a trope this is and its, like, negative consequences in terms of how we view that topic. So I, I, I don't know how much fault I want to give the boys for necessarily following in that trope because it's so long-running. But at the same time, like, with you know, how well this show does a lot of, uh, of its other writing, especially I think with, um, in, in some ways how it handles it's like, you know, um, it's politics, but I'll get more into that uh, kind of later in the episode. Um, uh, I, I think it is kind of unfortunate that they fell into this, you know, this kind of trapping with how they handled this whole, um, with this episode and topic, but, um, yeah, and, and we should expect more of our media. Like, we, you know, even, like, we should be able to challenge even well-established tropes and not just shrug off and say, well, it's done in other media, so why not just accept it here? So I think that's a fair criticism of the episode. I don't think it's enough to distract from this this, um, this season or even really, the, you know, the show in general, but th- I think that is a fair criticism to have. Uh, but a lot of other people, and I guess what kind of inspired um, this episode more, was that a lot of people were saying that with the Tech Knight Huey Dungeon episode, 
which is what I'm dubbing it out. I can't remember the actual episode name off the top of my head. Uh, a lot of people were saying that it was dipping too much into shock value that like, you know, it was essentially becoming like just like the comic with that. Um, and I, I have two main issues with that. Like one, have you read the comic? Like, no, the comic is still way more shocking than the show. Like, especially like granted, I haven't like really, I've only read like bits and pieces of the comic out of interest, but like, the example I would give was like the difference in how the comic treats, uh, treats, sorry, um, Soldier Boy versus how it's done in the show, right? And it's just like night and day. So I, I just don't think that's fair. And also, like, have we been watching the same show this whole time, right? Like, the show has not shied away from, you know, it, you know, shocking imagery both you know in term, like in terms of its violence or otherwise um like like for example in like one of the follow-up episodes to to the one i'm talking about you have where uh i i think it was in fact like the following episode to be exact you have like homelander that basically rips a guy in half right but you don't see people saying like oh that's a step too far in terms of like the shock but you know um but this one, it, but this episode is because it's you know shocking in terms of like sexual themes. Like uh, I don't know, man. I, I make it make sense, right? Like why why was this the tipping point for a lot of people, where you could argue it's been like w like worse in the past in terms of shock value. Um, no, it, it's always been kind of like a part of the show's identity. Um, I think I and to be fair, I I think it's handled kind of more. Um, uh, I don't know if I would say tastefully, but I, I don't know. I guess it's like it does kind of have like a humorous factor to it, which I think makes it more tolerable than I think a lot of other shows that go for like shock for the sake of like shock. And, you know, again, it's not like the only thing to like derive from the show, right? Like the show's appeal isn't just in its shock value. I think it does have very strong characters, you know, strong writing and things like that. But, um, yeah, so I guess with that, like I said, uh, overall I've enjoyed this season. I I I very much disagree with like a lot of the detractors saying that this is like, um, you know, that this the show is like taking a downturn with this season. Mind you, I don't know if I would say this is like even like my favorite season, but I don't know how fair that is because this show has had just overall great seasons in the past right and um this one it's kind of harder to gauge because it feels like it's it, like to fully contextualize everything that's happening in this season we need the next season right so it's so far it feels like incomplete to like fully judge this one without you know understanding how it builds into the next season um but no overall uh I, I love this season. I love how they had this kind of running theme of like a lot of the characters kind of confronting some aspect of their past. And, uh, you know, uh, again, with that, I don't, I don't want to go into too much spoilers here, but with uh, how you get the final dis desolation of um, like, I guess one of the messages of this, sh of this season with Huey in the last episode um, and how that compares to how Homelander handled de confronting his past um the only big issue that i have i guess is kind of with the introduction of sister sage and it's not what you might think so my issue with sister sage is that in general i'm not a really big fan in like um media in general i guess of you know uh I, hyper intelligent characters like superhumanly intelligent uh characters the only um I, there's only like a few exceptions i could think of where it was handled like pretty decently the one i would give is like ozzy mandez of watchmen um but the issue that i have with this type of archetype is that it's very difficult to write these characters without making a lot of their scheming and plotting seem like kind of, I, I guess, overpowered, right? So the example I would give with Sister Sage is that there's a sequence in this show 
where um, she's being kind of like tailed by, you know, the boys and particularly being tailed by, I think it was like Mother's Milk, Frenchie, and I think like Kimiko was was with them at the time. And, you know, they're, uh, they're trailing her through this, like, uh, basically this far right convention in the context of the show. And, um, you know, they follow her to a room and then she turns around. It's like, oh, surprise, I knew you were following me this whole time. And it's like, I don't want to say that's a plot contrivance because I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility for her to, like, know she was being tailed. But unless I miss something, you don't really understand how she figured it out, right? Like, how did she know she was being tailed? Um, And... Like again, I I hesitate to call it a plot contrivance, but you know, at the same time, I think what would have helped in general, and what helps the, these types of characters in general for me is being able to see their thought process, being able to understand, okay, how did she figure it out, right? Because otherwise, it kind of seems like she just found out out of nowhere, right? Which I I know that that wasn't what they were going for, but you know. Um, that's that's just kind of how it comes across. The other example I would give, again, without going too much into spoilers, is in the last episode, you kind of have this whole sequence where uh, Homelander's plan is just completely falling apart, right? And, you know, he's sitting in despair in his room, and then Sister Sage comes in, and she was like, oh, surprise, the, fa- the plan falling apart was actually my plan all along. And it's like, What? Like, again, it's not, like, outside the realm of possibility within the context of the show, but you don't really see how she kind of, like, how she thought through it. Like, in order for her to realize this, she basically had to predict that, oh, um, um, they were going to do X and Y and, you know, stuff like that. And it's just, like, you know, again, not, not impossible, but, like, very it's very specific things that would have had to happen again like if you had just shown how she came you know how she would figure out like oh this is going to happen because of this you know her thought process i think it would have helped at least me a lot better but again that's that's my take on it and at the same time i can understand why they went with writing her the way that they did uh a lot of it is to keep like her thinking and her scheming kind of enmatic, right? To uh, kind of keep her in mystery, so you don't necessarily understand like what she's scheming is who she, who you know, who is she playing at any given time, and that aspect of her works. Like you know, you are kind of intrigued by like, oh, what she, what's her next move going to be, right? And especially she does add an interesting dynamic to like. Homelander, especially since, you know, Homelander himself isn't really much of, like, a schemer. He kind of comes off more as, like, you know, this imposing thug, but he doesn't really, like, make plans himself or really think things out. Um, So having her kind of adds more of a... She also kind of adds more of a threat to Homelander in that regard. Um, And she also gets a lot of really funny scenes, especially with, you know, the Deep and uh, a lot of the other characters. So I, I, I don't want many of my criticisms to harp on the performance. I think she was, the, the character was well-performed. It's more just an issue that I have with like writing these types of characters in general. Um, but that's not, that wasn't really enough to like completely take Amy out of like the, the, the season. That's, I guess, just something I would like to see them maybe approach more in the future with her, although I don't know. I'm not quite sure how pivotal she'll be in the next season, but I mean, we'll get there when we get there, I guess. Um, I guess uh, I, I might as well take the time now because, uh, you know, again, I'm not like, I'm not necessarily big on just doing like a review. Usually I like to frame my conversations in the context to like some discussion around a piece of media, but I figured, you know, uh, I, I probably won't revisit this topic again in the future, uh, even after the final season of the show uh, comes out. So I figured I, I might as well just give my overall thoughts for people to uh, of the show. And, well, no surprise, I really do enjoy the show. I think it is leagues above the comic. I like how they... Um, 
how it feels like a superhero parody, but like more purposeful or like a superhero satire, but more purposeful, especially with, you know, it's like political messaging. I liked how it wears its politics on its sleeve and how um, it kind of approaches it. Some people might see it as an issue, though, because, you know, this show is very much a commentary on, like, the modern political landscape and that, you know, if you were to take this show outside of the current time period, like, let's say, like, in the far future or something, that it wouldn't, like, be as, like, resonant with people because it'll be, you know, it'll be kind of seen as outdated with, like, a lot of the references and stuff, and... I could kind of see that, but at the same time, I think the show touches upon enough, um, you know, just general universal themes that, um, you know, will be prevalent even way after, you know, the show stopped airing, like, you know, with its themes of corporatism, the rise of power, and what have you, that I think that there will still be an enjoyment. There is still, like, much you could read from the show even after, outside of our current, like, political landscape. Um, one issue, though, that uh, I've seen some other people point out that I, I do think is interesting is, um, I guess, how the show has evolved in terms of, you know, who it, you know, the focus on the different characters. So when the show first started out, there was kind of more of a focus on, like, Huey, and I guess to some degree too, like uh, Starlight as, uh, you know, the, well, Huey as like the emotional center of like the show and following him as he rises in the, you know, with the boys basically as he gets more integrated in their group. And it's nice because you see that contrasted with how Starlight rises in the seven, you know, as a compare and contrast. Um, but obviously as the show continued on, uh, and as people grew to like the larger cast, um, there was kind of a shift to like focusing on everyone, like kind of like an ensemble cast, essentially. So you got more storylines with like Frenchie, some with like the Deep, Homelander, um, you know, what have you. And I think, well, I don't necessarily hate it because, you know, I, I do like a lot of these characters especially like Frenchie and I think my favorite is honestly Mother's Milk um, I, I see how you could kind of lose something with like taking the focus away from Huey especially since Huey worked very well as like the emotional center and as kind of like the guiding point for understanding you know when the boys like to keep the boys from going too far in their pursuit of soups and I think you kind of lose that when um you know, you take the focus away from Huey and you basically just make him just a part of the team as as opposed, as opposed to this unique role in the team. Uh, and you also kind of get another problem with, especially with the popularity of Homelander, right? So, um, you know, as the show went on, and even now I think Homelander is like one of the, like one of the more popular characters in this series. Um and the problem is that, you know, taking that to mind, keeping that in mind, they're doing like more stories where we're, we're focusing on Homelander as, as like a character to the, you know, we're following his perspective, uh, sometimes even throughout certain episodes, right? Like in this season alone, for example, there was an episode, like I was saying, where he was confronting his own past and he directly goes to like I, I guess you could call it like a lab or something where he was raised, and it was it was a great episode. It was a good um, episode for the actor Anthony Starr to show off his like acting chops, and you know it's one that I think a lot of people really liked. But um, the issue that I have with the well, I guess this whole approach to Homelander is that you know when you follow a character like this, you kind of naturally build sympathy towards them and especially with like this latest episode you kind of understand like you know in a way why homelander is the way he is again i don't want to necessarily go too much into like spoilers on what happens or anything like that and but so you, you build sympathy for homelander but at the same time the show is obviously wanting to critique like homelander's philosophy and like you know um you know, his actions. So you kind of get like this incongruence where, you know, um, 
the show wants to critique it, but at the same time, like your audience is like kind of building a sympathy towards them. And granted, some of that is uh, also done in bad faith, like you know, um, because there are people that unironically like Homelander's politics and ideas, you know. Um, and then you have like he's also like been ingrained in the like literally me meme that a lot of people do with like you know more reactionary male characters or what have you. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I don't know, like in some ways it kind of feels like a detriment to the show to have Homelander be as sympathetic as he is, especially when you're like focusing on his perspective in certain episodes and things like that. Um, again, not enough to ruin it. And a lot of it is very much carried, I think by like the performance of Anthony Starr and, um, Things like that, but it, it's just a it's just a thing I guess to keep in mind um, for myself when I when I evaluate the show as a whole. Um, but looking, I guess, into the future of the show, so um, I think uh, from my understanding, it's mainly just going to be this final season. I know, like some of the actors were talking about, like, oh it'd be cool to have like a final season and then a movie to wrap it up. But I feel like that'd be a bit much like maybe what they could do is have like a longer last episode um, of, you know, just to kind of wrap up everything and give people like a big finale. Uh, I think from my understanding, this is mainly going to, this is definitely going to be the, the, the definitive ending for, like butcher and homelanders like story arc so i think after this i don't, I don't think we're necessarily gonna really like follow them unless if it's like through like you know um like uh flashback or whatever uh what's kind of unfortunate though is that you know with the nature of like news media um we already kind of know that they're trying to set up like more spin-offs in this franchise in general we already have gen v which I, I think with their current release schedule, what they're going to do is uh, because uh, this the last season of The Boys isn't going to air until 2026. So I think what they're going to do is air a season of Gen V in 2025. That is if they continue with it. I know, unfortunately, um, they lost one of the actors in the um, one of the lead actors in the roles. So I, I wasn't com I'm not completely sure if they're still going through with the plans of like doing another um episode of gen v i i think that was the plan because in this latest season uh there are some references from like the first season of gen v but we're still missing a lot of information regarding like some of the main characters of gen v and where they are in the context to like the current boys timeline so they might try and answer that by releasing uh the next season of Gen V before the last season of the boys. But again, I'm not necessarily sure. Um, but we also know that beyond that, I think they were talking about doing like the boys Mexico, which is like a spin off the boys, but you know, centered in Mexico. And so like kind of knowing that it somewhat informs, um, in a way how they're going to approach the end to um you know uh this i guess how would you say uh to to the, like the boys of the series um but either way i'm looking forward to it i'm really curious to um because especially man that that last episode of this season really like leaves you on like a really strong cliffhanger so i'm really curious to know like what um where they go with it and also like i guess the response to this last episode is kind of why uh, i would say like i would say like maybe some of the points i made earlier might be kind of outdated because you know you have people saying like oh man the show's been like you know taking a downhill turn but like the season has had amazing viewership so i don't know if that's just how much of it's just you know people waffling or you know just saying whatever for like you know um just to have a hot take but they don't really mean it um so yeah i'm very excited for that um i, I look forward to uh i'm looking i'm still looking forward to like watching the boys i think it's a great show i would 
highly recommend it. Um, but I think that is going to do it for me. Oh, as an unfortunate spoiler, though, for listeners of the podcast, apparently Ponce was the renegade that had it made. So I'm sorry, dude. The jig is up. Thank you.